Hello, Digital DJ Tips family. It's Phil here for another Thursday Q&A live. And we are live from the Digital DJ Tips studio here in Gibraltar. And if you see the curtain waving about a bit here, it's because behind that I've got the window open uh, because it's quite hot in here. So if you hear planes taking off and landing or people shouting and stuff, the, the airport is like literally 100 yards that way. So uh, that will be why. But uh, we're going to deal with that because I want that window open so that I can survive the next half hour. Anyway, enough about me. Welcome to the show. It is an hour. Well, no, not an hour. Maybe 45 minutes is normally, but it may sometimes it goes on longer of helping you guys and girls out with your DJing and your DJ producing. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Uh, so, you know, those of you that don't know us, we're the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the Amazon bestseller on how to DJ. We're also the people behind digitaldjtips.com, uh, which a lot of you, of course, will uh, have been hanging out on uh, over the years. Uh, of course, we have got an awful lot of DJ courses, and I'll tell you about our latest DJ course at the end of this broadcast. So we're a DJ school and we're here to help you. So that's what this is all about. You've got me, the founder of the school, here with you for the next 45 minutes, I guess, uh, to help you out. So welcome. That's what this is all about. Uh, hello to everyone who's piling in. I can see the usual, a lot of the usual names. Good to have you here. Uh, all the regulars. It's uh, it's very humbling to see you here week after week. So hi to uh, to Danger Dude and to Nigel. Hi to Juan, uh, to DJ Kev. Dave B says, hey, Phil, fancy looking decks. Do you like the 3000s? Uh, so we, the reason we put these decks here, of course, on the opening segment is to get you to click and see what this is all about. Proper clickbait. Uh, over the last few weeks, it has been the Pioneer CDJ 3000s. Yes, I do really like them. Uh, they are just very easy to DJ on, which is kind of what it's all about. Uh, so yeah, we've had a lot of fun with the with the 3000s. Uh, so thank you for that question, Dave. And that's got us started on the questions. Hello to uh, Beat Bloxes, who's in Manchester, UK, my, my ex-home city. Well, I guess it is my home city, really, if you think about it. You never... You never change your home city, but uh, but I'm not there anymore and haven't been for a long time, but good to have you here. So hi to Peter uh, in uh, in uh, Holland. Oh, Peter. Hello, Peter. He says, the live, stream sing single, the live stream symbol is active on the Digital DJ Tips uh, YouTube channel, but there's no stream in the list. Maybe it pops up. Maybe there's an issue. We've got a lot of people on here from YouTube, but there is there does seem to be something strange changing on YouTube at the moment because that's been... A few times that people have said that so we've got no idea why that might be uh, but i'm going to clip your comment there and we will have a further look into that as a team uh, over the next uh, couple of days to see if we can work out why that's happening if you're on youtube and you can hear and see us okay do let us know because uh, you know we want that to be the case uh, thank you for that peter uh, we are also just for those of you that want to know we're live on facebook on digital dj tips Facebook page. We're on the Global DJ Network Facebook group. We are on Student Hub, the Digital DJ Tips Facebook student group. We're also on YouTube, hopefully, Twitch, and on Mixcloud Live. So there's lots of places you can catch this show and indeed Tuesday Tips Live, the show on a Tuesday. Uh, Derek says, I'm hoping to hear more info on the new Pioneer DJ MS11. Allegedly, anyway, the DJ MS11, that's what they're calling it. Uh, we have got some info on the website. This is everything we know about this DJ MS9 supposed replacement mixer. There's some pictures there from a very short Instagram post uh, that someone seems to have got their hands on it. It looks genuine. It looks like they have a screen on it in the same way that the Rain 72 has a screen on it. And that screen uh, would presumably work with Serato, but Pioneer has its own DJ software, so it would presumably work with Rekordbox as well. Now, the mixer's name on that picture is the DJM XXX, so we don't have any independent confirmation of that name. That was Pioneer's official teaser. And then there was this little video here as well. So lots of speculation going on over on the Digital DJ Tips website about that. If you want to come and join in, the comments going on underneath there uh, about that, head over and do it. It's on the Digital DJ Tips website. But yeah, we'd like to know about that. Peter says, YouTube is live now. Yeah, it just seems to stutter at the beginning there, Peter. We've noticed that, but thank you for reporting that. Omar in uh, California says, cheers. Glad I finally made it to one of these broadcasts. Hey, any chance that house mixing course will be on sale for Black Friday? Well, it's no secret that our Black Friday sale is our biggest sale of the year, and we try and put as much as possible into it. So that is what I'm saying about that, Omar. 
Uh, hello to uh, Jorge in Portugal. Good to have you here. Not so far from us down here. Uh, hi to Paul in Melbourne. That is a long way from us. Uh, by the way, you know, you guys and girls are all over the world. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about on Digital DJ Tips this week is uh, COVID around the world uh, because there are gigs going on, believe it or not. Uh, and so we've got a post over there on COVID DJ gigs and uh, what it's like to play them. So uh, as part of that post, we did a kind of run round on the Student Hub group, which is our private Facebook group for people who are students of us. Uh, and there's lots of interesting stuff there about what lockdown is actually like in England and Holland and Indonesia and Canada and different parts of the USA and Australia. That's what got me thinking about this in Portugal. So let us know what lockdown is like. Are you playing gigs? Uh, and there's some advice here for playing COVID gigs, which I'll probably talk about in a Tuesday tips soon. Uh, but if you want to come and take part in this post about COVID, COVID lockdown and what to do if you do get offered a gig and you can play, uh, you know, uh, come and have a look. There's some interesting comments already piling on that article, which only went live a few hours ago. Uh, but let us know here in the comments, you know, uh, have you played any gigs? What have they been like? I'd love to know. Uh, Ian says, I read the book last week. Uh, I uh, It was very good and I got a lot from it. That's this book here. There you go. Hear that? That'll be a British Airways off to London Heathrow with probably about 20 people on board because... Uh, Apparently, the flights are not uh, the most popular things at the moment. Anyway, uh, yeah, so thank you for that, Peter. Uh, Ian, sorry. Uh, Tiffany says, hello. Hello, Tiffany. Always good to have you here. Colin says, I love the look of those 3000s. The screens are pretty nice on the 3000s. Uh, it's true. Hi, Kevin. Uh, and hello to Keith. Uh, so uh, the next question is from uh, Mike. Hi, Phil. Decided against putting USB 3 uh, for the USB slot. I think the reason they did it was that they thought that the USB slots were fast enough on these and they wanted to put the money elsewhere. That was what they told Mojax, who, uh, you know, some people think that, you know, people reviewing gear online are, are all kind of at each other's throats, but we're not at all. It's a very small community, uh, gear reviewers and DJ tech companies. And we talk to everyone else in this industry a lot. And I was chatting to Mo Mojax about the ins and outs of the 3000s. And he said that's what Pioneer told him, that it was just uh, they wanted to put the money elsewhere in the unit. So, uh, yeah, read into that what you will. Uh, hello to Moto, Moto F Motor in Stoke-on-Trent in the Potteries there in the UK. Hi, Jason. It's always good to have you here. Uh, Heavy says we are loud and clear on YouTube. That's cool. Paul Taylor says uh, technology, eh? Yeah, indeed. Technology. Uh, and uh, thank you to my lovely wife who's confirming that it all looks fine. Uh, on YouTube, so that's cool. Uh, so, all right then. A hi and a hi to Thomas in Afghanistan. Uh, Tiffany has a question. What's the difference between a bootleg and a remix? It's a great question, uh, and it's a good one right now, of course, because uh, we've just launched our laid-back Luke's bootlegs, mashups, and re-edits course. So you might ask yourself, what is the difference between, uh, indeed, those three things: bootlegs, mash mashups, and re-edits? So I'll tell you very quickly, and it's very simple. A, a re-edit is where you just take an existing track and you make it shorter, make it longer, move the bits around. Uh, and the only stuff you're using is, is the existing track. You're literally just taking it and chopping it up. You can even do it in your DJ software. Indeed, Serato Flip, which is a function in Serato, will let you do that and just use cue points. Put cue points in different places, move around the track with cue points, and it will remember what you pressed. And next time you get a chance of playing it back like that. So that's what a re edit is. A mashup is where you take more than one track and do exactly what I just said. So you might take an acapella and an instrumental, that's the classic mashup. And there you might alter the key because nowadays you've got key sync to alter the keys of tracks to make them suit. But basically you're taking two fully completed tracks and just taking or more and taking parts from them and moving them around and turning them into something new. Again, you could do that in your DJ software, but also now we're moving into the kind of thing you would do in Ableton Live or any other digital audio workstation because it gives you more flexibility. You know, all of this stuff, including re-edits, gives you a lot more flexibility if you're using a digital audio workstation like Ableton Live, FL Studio, Logic, that kind of thing. And then you move on to bootlegs and bootlegs are very different. Bootlegs are where you start off with a track or indeed tracks because you could use more than one track but then you start adding your own stuff. So you might change the BPM and the genre by putting a different set of drums in it to give it a different feel. 
uh, you might start adding your own bass lines and vocals and melodies and so on. They might come from other tracks, from sample packs, you might play them. But basically, instead of starting from scratch, you are using an existing track as inspiration and then taking it as far as you want to. Another way of looking at bootlegs is they're like unofficial remixes. So you haven't got what are called the stems. And the stems are when, you know, say that Laid Back Luke wants to remix a track or is asked to remix a track. They will give Luke the studio, uh, the kind of director's cut with every single sound from that track, every drum sound, every vocal sample, every instrument. And Luke will sit there and load that all into a big project and then start working on it. You haven't got that. You've just got the finished track. But the scope of a bootleg is the same as the scope of making your own track. You can do anything to it. So that's why I put them in that order when I described it. Re-edit, simple, mashup, medium, bootlegs can get very, very complicated. Uh, so that's the difference between them. Thank you for asking about that, Tiffany. And if you're interested in taking a look at the loop course, by the way, uh, you can go to djtips.co slash mashup. Uh, to learn a bit more about this course here, Layback Luke's Bootlegs, Mashups and Re-Edits, which we literally just launched. We managed to get this filmed uh, in COVID. There was a little dip where we were allowed to travel and Amsterdam would let us in. Uh, and we got, and Luke could get into Amsterdam as well. Craziness, people, real craziness. Uh, we managed to do all that and uh, get into, uh, to film this with Luke. And then a couple of weeks after we got home, Amsterdam is now back on lockdown. So the, the gods were smiling on us when we made this and we managed to get it done. So it's now available uh, and it's got a special launch offer. So there you go, djtips.co slash mashup if you want to have a look at it uh, and see if it's something you're interested in doing. Uh, the next question then is just from Rubesta who just says, hi, I love these videos. Keep up the good work. Hey, we love doing them. I've had a hard, I say it every week, I've had a hard day today, a bit of a headache, uh, been editing videos, staring at that screen. But you know, this is like going to the pub at the end of the working day and just talking DJing. So I love it, absolutely love it. Uh, so the next question is from uh, Martin who says, have you used the ADJ Airstream Bridge? Because my app is messing up and I need to know what else it can do. No, we haven't. I've seen it demoed at DJ shows. This is where you've got uh, an app on your phone, right? And it communicates wirelessly with your lights. Uh, no, haven't, haven't uh, got any advice for you there. If anyone has though, Martin's over on YouTube grab him in the comments and help him out. I'd love that. Uh, Atitya says, some recommendations for DJ monitors for my home studio. Really depends on what you want to spend. Uh, again, if people have got some recommendations or want to have a chat there, it's in the YouTube comments. Uh, but you know, the KRKs are a good solid range of speakers for a start. Uh, hello to uh, Bashan Borlang. Uh, Jay, uh, Jai Panade says, uh, about live streaming without being cut. Uh, YouTube seems like a great choice, no? Uh, it is, but it's always a good idea to test your live stream first. So how the hell do you do that? Well, all the tracks you might want to play in your live stream, put them into a big mix of some kind, or just put them all into a timeline in iMovie or any anything that'll output an MP4 or a movie file. Put any old visuals on it, any old visuals, just any old video off your phone, keep cut and pasting it. So you get a video of all the tracks you might want to play. Upload it to your YouTube channel, unlisted, and wait 10 minutes till it's processed, and then it will tell you whether you're gonna get blocked. Uh, what you wanna see is yellow dots by all those tracks, which means that you can play them, but they'll be monetized by the record company. Any red dots basically means that it, your whole video is blocked worldwide, so you'll need to not use those tracks. Just a little tip there. Uh, but yes, YouTube is a great compromise between most of your videos, sorry, most of the tracks you're gonna play on your live stream being all right, and a reasonable reach, uh, you know, just out of interest on YouTube at the moment. I mean, we've got a big YouTube channel, of course, but YouTube at the moment is just ahead of Facebook uh, for us, for the number of people watching this broadcast, uh, just to give you an idea, you know, so, but Facebook's, you can't do it on Facebook, just can't, doesn't work. You're gonna get blocked immediately. Uh, so yeah, that answers Jason's question. Uh, so Facebook actually got in touch with us and said, look, our policy on live streams is not new. It's been there since 2008. It's just, it was attached to our new terms and conditions. So it looked new, uh, but so it hasn't changed, but unfortunately that doesn't help you because they block them all. So, uh, so yeah, you can't do it on Facebook, unfortunately. Igor says the best monitors for me are the Yamaha HS5 and the HS8S, not cheap, but good. So there you go. There's some advice there. Hi, Thomas is not in North Korea and in where it, where you and in Afghanistan. Thomas, you're pulling our leg, my friend, and you're also uh, you're also teleporting between these these uh, very un unusual uh, and unlikely places. So we've uh, we've got you there, Thomas. Uh, apparently, we're uh, we're 
happily live on Twitch as well. Yeah, I know we are. We get a lovely report. In fact, do you want me to show you the panel we get here that shows us all the places we're live on? Here you go. A little peek behind the scenes here. So I can see now that uh, we've got only a few of you on Twitch, but we do value you. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, a few people on our private pages as well, but the most people watching this live are on YouTube and Facebook. So there you go. A little peek behind the scenes for you there. Uh, okay. Uh, so... Uh, Ian has just helped out by helping you all in on the Facebook comments about the difference between re-edits, mashups and bootlegs. So it's all written down there. Uh, Ian found uh, a post where we explained that as well. So thank you. Doing my job for me. Uh, Paul says live stream is more intended for original artists nowadays. Who do you ask though? Because on uh, Mixcloud, live streaming is fine uh, for DJs. This is Mixcloud, by the way. We're currently streaming on Mixcloud ourselves. Uh, and it looks like this. And uh, we've got... Uh, a full license on there. That looks really weird when my voice is out of key, doesn't it? Uh, but anyway, uh, hello to Nick Vandal over there. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, you can DJ stream on Mixcloud absolutely fine. So it just depends where you're streaming, really. Uh, Jordan says in San Diego, in California, all of our bars and clubs are still closed. Same I know in LA. So that's probably all of California, right? Uh, Melbourne's dead, says Paul. Uh, no parties in Portugal for the moment, says Jorge. And uh, but I do know people are holding underground parties to get their music fixed. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? That's what's likely to happen if you just push these things underground. It's very, very difficult to, to decide what to do, isn't it? I mean, a politician in Spain just over the border from us said, you know, people are still getting killed in car crashes, but we don't ban the car. And that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? How long can we be in lockdown for? Anyway, Gary says, hi, Phil. I currently own a DDJ 1000 SRT but I'm toying with the idea of getting a new Mark NS73 as I really love the platters. What are your thoughts? Well, it's easy. If you want those moving platters, go for it because nothing else has got, no other controller has got them apart from the Tractor Control S4. But I'm guessing you're a Serato DJ, right? So yeah, I'd say go for it if you want those platters. Jason says, I'm thinking of ditching the MacBook and going with a well-spec Windows laptop using Serato and DJ. Any thought on recommendations? So Jason is on Facebook. Any recommendations for a Windows laptop? Head over there and help him, please. I would say think very hard about why you want to do this, Jason. Be clear about it because it's not easy to switch operating systems. So just be sure. Um, so Mixmaster G says, I'm not an active DJ anymore, but by the amount of questions I receive, I can tell a lot of artists are converting collections. So you're obviously talking about uh, moving your collection between software there because Mixmaster G has got some great programs that help you do that. If you want to join in that conversation, it's going over, going on over on our YouTube channel. Uh, Sambo610 says, I played gigs recently in a big marquee. It wasn't the same, but it was good to have some sort of normal. So I guess that's because that was classed as outdoors, right? Uh, Selector Shaka says, I love the website, though. After 25 years of touring as a turntablist to digital, I got enough from digital DJ tips. Big up. Good to have you here. Uh, DJ Shaka. Uh, the next uh, question is, what's the simplest DJ controller that's cheap and easy to get from DJ Ice Age? So the very simplest ones are controllers like these two here. A little Newmark uh, NS, uh, so NS, that's not an NS at all, dj to go 2 or dj to go 2 uh, Touch, which is a slightly more modern one than the one I've got there, or the DDJ200 from Pioneer DJ. They're the simplest, but for most people, I wouldn't recommend getting either of those. For most people, and I haven't got one in front of me to hold up for you, I would recommend you start with a DDJ SB3 or a DDJ 400. They're both Pioneer DJ controllers. DDJ SB3 or DDJ 400. The SB3 is for Serato, the 400 is for Recordbox. So you've got to work out whether you want to go down the Pioneer Recordbox route or the Serato route. Uh, and you'll probably know that already. Look at the people around you. What are they using? Uh, but either of those are the best. And the reason they're the best is they're just a bit bigger than the two I just showed you. They've got three band EQs on them, which are quite important. And they've also got um, uh, um, slightly bigger jog wheels. So they just they just spread out a bit more. And they've got audio interfaces, which the DDJ200 hasn't. Another very solid range are the mix tracks. So the mix track, uh, the two new mix tracks, there's a platinum uh FX and a Pro FX from Mixtrack. Either of those would be great. They're, they're new mark controllers. So there you go. There's a good starting point for you there for your research. Of course, we have reviews on Digital DJ Tips of all of these things. And for those of you who haven't looked at our review section uh, for a while, uh, it's quite nice the way our reviews work. You can decide what you want on the 
left hand side and drill into it and then once you've done that you get a chance of uh, ticking things so you might only want to see DJ controllers and then it's going to narrow it down to DJ controllers you might only want to look at Serato controllers and it's going to narrow it down to them you can even narrow it down in price so there we go there's the Serato controllers uh, a reasonable price and you will see immediately we're starting to get some of the controllers I've been talking to you about coming up there so uh, go and take a peek at the review section if you want to get stuck into uh, the ins and outs of some of these they've all got a video and they've all got a written review uh, once you go Mac, you can't go back, says Paul. Well, looks like, uh, looks like our, 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 our viewer, um, considering the switch, whose name uh, currently escapes me, uh, is a exception to prove the rule there. Uh, the uh, next question is from... Um, I'm just looking now. Uh, for something which is new. Sorry, I just got distracted by something about... Uh, our broadband but uh, anyway um, Simboy says in Israel bars and clubs and everyone is on lockdown but I guess in a couple of weeks things will calm down again well uh, we will wait and see won't we Lepora says shout out from the Netherlands unfortunately I had to stop at my regular place the club could no longer pay me but plenty of time to learn to produce look this is one of the great things about lockdown if there is a great thing you do get time to improve your game right so uh, if you are locked down I would say don't sit there you know, watching Netflix, her waiting for clubs to open. Just don't think that they're going to open again and, and learn, 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 learn production, learn new mixing skills, learn, re, you know, re-edits, bootlegs and mashups if that's something that you, you, you're you not doing yet. You know, as I say, we just launched a course on them. Uh, but learn. Don't just sit there thinking it's all going to go back to normal and until it does, you're going to go on pause yourself because we don't know how long this is going on for. Uh, Blake says, Phil, what are your favourite genres? Mine are UK uh, and happy hardcore uh, and drum and bass. And if anyone else wants to share their favourite genres, do it in the comments. Mine has always been house. I play kind of very mellow house, the kind of stuff that wouldn't be out of place in a beach bar uh, and you know, or in a club warm up. Uh, and then I also play chill out music because I'm a, I'm a sucker for Cafe Del Mar and all that stuff. So that's what I've played for many years now. And as I've got older, my music's got mellower. I bet a lot of people will be nodding along with that as well. But that does mean I do love a banging techno and old hardcore and stuff like that as well. It's my youth. It will never leave me. Keith says, we're talking about gigs. Uh, I did a birthday party for a 60-year-old last Friday. I brought my best. They did not like it. It was hard wearing a mask, but I got through it. It is difficult, isn't it, Keith? Um, and as I say, in the article that we published um, today, we talk about that. We talk about ways of potentially... Uh, dealing with these kind of gigs uh, and uh, it's, it's all in this section in the middle of the article uh, so go and look for this article here with the picture of the uh, the girl playing with a mask on uh, that's the one that I'm talking about and there's some advice for playing COVID gigs in there so let's pick another question uh, hello to Disco Worm in uh, San Francisco uh, uh, Bastian Borlang says what DJ courses would you recommend for a newbie like me it's very very simple uh, for a newbie, I would recommend you head over to our website, head to the DJ courses page and go to the either the essential courses here. If you just want to get started, you want something quick and easy to get started. If you want to start in uh, DJing, get DJing made easy. This one here, if you want to start in music production, get that one there. Don't look any further than that. These are the courses for absolute beginners who just want to have a go, just want to play, just want to scratch an itch if you like. But if you are serious about this and you know you're going to be want to be doing this for a long time, you've always wanted to do it, you're serious about it, head for this category here, Complete Courses. And in Complete Courses, head for the Complete DJ course if you want to learn to DJ. Head for the All New Scratching for Controller DJs course if you want to learn to scratch. Head for the All New Dance Music Formula if you want to learn to produce. And head for the new mobile DJ blueprint if you want to set up a mobile DJ business, weddings and that kind of thing. Across those four courses there, we cover everything that you could possibly want to do seriously. And they all start from beginner level. So don't think that because they're complete courses, they're starting anywhere other than at the beginning. Uh, so I hope that helps you. Thank you for the question there. Um, so this so uh, this question is for um, Donny, who says, maybe it's a bit off topic, but when are you going to do some mixing competitions for amateurs and semi-pro DJs? It's a good question. We'll leave it on our list and maybe we will uh, do something with that in the future. Uh, have you got any recommendation, recommendations for a site to buy techno and techno vinyl online, but a place that lets you listen to samples first like Beatport? Oh, good question. I don't think so. Not for vinyl. 
Um, but if anyone's got any ideas for Dave there, Dave is on YouTube and you can find out in the comments there. Uh, YouTube will copyright strike most popular tunes. Yeah, but it won't take your video down. That's the point. It's all right. Copyright strikes are fine. Uh, they're not actually copyright strikes. I think you don't get a strike on your account. Um, it depends where you are, though, Merge Beats. I have to say that. Um, but usually it will just give you an advisory that the track has been fingerprinted and that the record company is getting the data or is um, putting adverts on it, uh, which is fine. You know, it's a fair compromise for us. Uh, the next question is, uh, and we're now getting to the point of the questions where you're answering each other's questions from today, which is so cool. Uh, Beatbloxer says, we started to use Restream. This is for streaming. It doesn't integrate well with Mixcloud. Um, no, but nothing integrates well with Mixcloud. Mixcloud's API is not very good at the moment. So unless you're going to broadcast directly to Mixcloud, nothing's going to be any better. Um, and you also asked, is um, Ecamm Live the same as Restream? No, Ecamm Live is actually the software that I'm using to talk to you on now. And this is called video production software. It's running on a Mac in front of me. And it lets me do all this stuff I do, like switching screens like this and so on. And putting the... Uh, putting the um, uh, the screen on here to show you courses and things like that and putting your comments on the screen. That's what's happening with Ecamm Live. Uh, and another piece of software that does that is uh, the very popular one called OBS. But Restream is what allows me to stream at the same time to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Mixcloud, and so on. So that's the difference between the two pieces of software there. Another question then. This is great fun, by the way. Can you hit the likes and loves, please, if you're enjoying this on your particular platform? Whatever whatever thumbs up you've got, because uh, that's our own, only way of knowing we're doing good with this. So I'd really appreciate here, as we're about halfway through this, and I will carry on as long as the questions come in, uh, that you're enjoying this. Because, as I say, uh, that's you clapping or putting your arms in the air on the, uh, on the collective global dance floor that is Thursday Q&A Live. So I'd really appreciate that. And by the way, also, please do hit... The, uh, the share buttons and the like buttons and all that kind of stuff if you are um, enjoying this because share helps us to get this far and wide and helps us to do this every week. Right, okay, little uh, bit of pep talk over there. Uh, I'm going to now, I'm just actually going to make a note of something. So you're going to have to excuse me for two seconds. So I just thought, wouldn't it be good if I could have our little YouTube subscribe and share uh, to click on the screen when I say that. So next week, hopefully, I will have that added. Little note to ask my team to do that for me. Right, Motor says, I want to buy a new DJ setup, but I'm not sure uh, which one I can get if I get Denon or Pioneer. Can you give me some advice? Right, get Pioneer if you're going to want to play in clubs on other people's gear. Get Denon if you don't care about that, you want to be a mobile DJ, you're always going to be using your own gear. Or rather, Denon makes a lot of sense in that, in that instance. There's no time I can see in the near future where you're going to arrive at a club and they're going to have Denon gear. Just not going to be the case. So Pioneer, if you think you're going to be playing on other people's gear in clubs, you can consider Denon because at the moment their technology is superior or rather their features are superior if you know you're only going to be DJing on your own gear. So who cares what brand you use? We could go on for hours about this, but that's my kind of 20 second version. Um, Lord says, I had no problem with streaming on Twitch, but... Uh, the recordings afterwards can be muted on certain songs. There is some news about Twitch, which came in today that I haven't had time to look at, but it might be good news. So keep an eye on the website. I'll write that up tomorrow and try and get that live tomorrow. Uh, other news, by the way, I always like to share what's going on out and about in DJ World. Uh, we've already talked about the possible replacement for the Pioneer DJ MS9, uh, but also uh, Pioneer's Record Box has now got an, an edit mode where you can actually make re-edits, we were talking about those earlier, right in Record Box. And they've also added Tidal to Record Box as a streaming service. So that's quite interesting. You can get that on Record Box 6.1.1. All this is over on the website, by the way, so head over there to read about this. Uh, and Tractor users, Tractor Pro 3.4 has landed with major improvements to the library. You've now officially got smart lists or smart playlists, as everyone else calls them. Uh, and there's a lot of other things have been fixed. I mean, there's been, you know, people often say minor fixes and stuff, but they've fixed hundreds of things in Tractor, really improved the way the library looks and feels. And if you're on a Mac, it now feels very smooth. The software scrolls smoothly. The graphics are sharper. It is quite a big update to Tractor. So if you are a Tractor user, uh, go and get 3.4. It's worth it. Um, Danny says, which course should I take to be great in transitions, mixing, using effects and more? Again, it's very, very easy for me to uh, point that out to you. I'll show you where to find that information out. Digital DJ tips, go to the courses tab at the top and scroll down, go to essential courses and then scroll down to 
mixing cookbook courses here. And this is where you'll find all that stuff. So our latest one is called House Mixing Mastery, which does all that stuff for house music. Then you've got Mixing Power Skills and Mixing Mastery, which is the one two further along. They do all that stuff for basically all music. So if you want to learn to mix different genres and BPMs, uh, they're the ones for you. House is obviously concentrating on house. And Layback Luke's Creative DJ, which is the last course we did with him. If you love the, the big EDM style of doing this, you love the stuff Luke does, that is the course to go for there. So there's four options there to help you in fix up your transitions, mixing, effects, and so on. So I hope that helps you, Danny. Thank you for that. Uh, Rubesta says the UK is dead, no clubs. So uh, sorry to hear that, uh, but there's a lot of illegal raves going on there, aren't there? Um, Eric says, what's the legal problem with Facebook? If we source our tracks legally, we can play those in public. What makes that illegal in a platform like Facebook? Because the venues you play in in public have got a public performance license, which means they pay the record labels to allow you to DJ in their venues. If you were DJing in public, like in a field, you would need that kind of license. Facebook doesn't have a blanket license for you to do that on their platform. So that is the short version of that, Eric. Uh, Craig says, I'm just joining. What have I missed? Um, I wonder if Facebook is a complete no-go now for live streaming. Yes, it is. Um, but um, you've missed a lot. But the good news is that you can go and watch the replay of this on YouTube and on Facebook, and they'll be available a few minutes after we stop. So you haven't missed anything, really. And by the way, if you're watching this on the replay and you think, I wish I'd have seen that live, you know what to do. Hit notifications, hit subscribe, and then hit show uh, show notifications for this channel or show posts first. And then when we go live, you'll know. Uh, you'll be one of the people joining us live. And as always, the people joining us live goes up and up and up. We're now on about 300 live. And that jumps to about 5,000 on the replay. We love doing it. We love helping so many people. Um, so thank you if you're one of those people asking questions and here with us live now. Uh, lots of people say, no, stick to Mac. Uh, so we're having the Mac PC debate a little bit earlier on. Um, Guy says, Alicante in Benidorm here in Spain is extremely quiet. Benny is like a ghost town. Um, Hayden says, I switched from PC to Mac on. I never look back. Let's not get too much into this debate. Uh, the truth is you can use both for DJing. They're, they're fine. Um, Faithful Guitar Tutorials says, hi, this is Gustavo. One question. I want to play Tractor 3 Pro with an X1 and, F and an F1. I'm thinking about a mixer. I'm ru ruling out the Control Z1. Uh, is the Zone K2 a good option for this setup? It's all right, yeah. I mean, you get you get an audio card in the Zone K2. So what, what Gustavo is asking here is, with Tractor, they sell these kind of controllers, and I haven't got one handy to show you. They're like modular controllers. So the X1 lets you control a deck. The uh, the uh, uh, the F1 is more a controller, for, like a button controller. And you can plug these in, but you still need a mixer and a sound card. And a sound card. So yeah, the Zone K2, you'd probably have to configure it all yourself. But that might be a good one. You could look at the tractor, um, the tractor Z2 as well, which isn't that expensive nowadays, and it's a great mixer. Uh, the next uh, comment I want to uh, get to, and my team, if you can get the spammers out of uh, Twitch, don't know if you can, but anyway, uh, that'd be good. Uh, Paul says, "Is the Pioneer set set up yours to keep now, Phil, or do they have to go back to Pioneer? Uh, we have them on loan from Pioneer, and as soon as we finish with them, they normally take them back." To loan them to someone else uh, but we've got lots more stuff we want to film with those so they're here for the for the time being Paul uh, thank you for asking the question uh, oh that was a good blue screen wasn't it uh, Phil see the mini rig system with a pair of them will a pair of them replace my old Newmark party mix in terms of volume not sure what you're asking there because party mix doesn't have a speaker in it unless you mean the party mix that's got that speaker built in no no they probably won't no um, mini rigs are great little speakers if you don't know what a mini rig is by the way it's a speaker from uh, a company in the UK, uh, which is absolutely brilliant for uh, charging up and taking with you uh, when you go out and about. I've just Google imaged it to show you. These are mini rig speakers, lots of views of them there. Uh, they're really nice because they are very well made and they sound great. And you can see this one in the middle here is a bass speaker, that long thin tube there is actually a bass speaker. Uh, so these are good for that reason. They just last longer than uh, some of the cheap plastic speakers. And we've been using them for years at Digital DJ Tips. We thoroughly recommend them. So that's what that's what um, uh, this Facebook user is talking about. But uh, no, they wouldn't replace um, you know, a proper big speaker. 
Uh, would you recommend the Newmark mixed track, pla mixed track Platinum FX for a newbie like me? Yes, I would. Simple short answer there. Uh, Regess says, is there a way to add effects to my mic line straight from the controller? I have a DDJ SR2. No, I don't think you can on an SR2. It goes straight into the controller and out to your speakers. So the only way of doing that would be to have an external mixer that you plug your controller into and your microphone into, which had effects on it. So uh, not an easy fix for you there. Uh, then, okay, we've got uh, so many questions here that I'm gonna carry on for a bit longer. So don't worry if you've asked a question. I might, I might get to it um, because I'm gonna leave it a bit longer today just because there's so many of you asking so many good questions. So thank you. What's the best platform for record pools? Platform for record pools. So I guess what you're asking is what's the best record pool? It all depends on what kind of music you're into. Most record pools are commercial. So for those of you that don't know what record pools are, they are subscription services where working DJs can join and get unlimited new music for a set fee each month. And you get tend to get the DJ versions of songs with intros and outros and clean edits and acapellas and stuff that you can use. Um, special edits maybe that are only available on that pool. Most record pools are commercial. So that means DJ City, BPM Supreme, promo only, all those big names. There are some that specialize a bit. Um, and one example of that kind of record pool is Zip DJ. Zip DJ is very good for house. So it's worth trying the different pools and finding one that works for you. Most of them have got, have got a, a free option that lets you give them a go. Uh, and uh, if you want to help Al, um, because Al might add to that Facebook comment the kind of music that he's looking for, then or she, then head over to Facebook where that comment is. Um, any reasonable microphone, says DJ Nine Iron, the Shaw SM58. Can't go wrong with an SM58 if you just want one to DJ with, to hold in your hand, to give to your MC or whatever. Uh, so more questions. Hi, Phil. I'm about to start a setup and breakdown exercise to keep my loading and unloading muscles in shape, lol. So you're actually going to be having your own home gym just to keep you fit and healthy for when you have to hulk that PA system into your car and back again, right? Um, wow. Julian says, Phil, I still mix the old school way, but last weekend I gave it a go to analyze my digital tracks and it opened up a whole new world of mixing. The possibilities you get now is endless. Wow. Thanks, Phil. You know, I came from the old school as well. I totally understand. Uh, I totally understand why you'd want to mix the old way. But really, nowadays, you miss so much if you don't go with the modern tools. So, you know, our, we were talking about our Mixing Power Skills course a little bit earlier, which is one of our courses that teaches like next level mixing. And the stuff in this course you cannot do without beat gridding your tracks and using the sync button because we'll like use three or four decks at once all ganged together and we'll have an acapella on one and a beat on another. You know, you can't do four acapella live remixing, uh, four deck acapella live remixing without using sync and without using beat gridding. Uh, you can't do tricks with two copies of the same track, chorus echo, phasing and beat matching and remixes, uh, and beat mashing and remixes uh, without using modern tools like sync and beat gridding. Uh, you can't change the BPM of multiple tracks at once without doing this. Um, and you certainly can't mix the unmixable uh, with beat grids where we use special techniques to uh, allow you to mix like rock with house and stuff without using all the new tools. So if any old school DJs are watching this thinking all that new stuff is cheating, please, please, please take it from me. If you're using the new tools to free you up to be creative in ways you could never have imagined uh, in just the way that Julian was uh, articulating there, it's not cheating, it's awesome. And I know you'll love it. I mean, I'm normally preaching to the converted here because this argument's kind of, kind of old now, but there are people still doing it for the first time like Julian there. Uh, okay. So let's move on to our next question. Lee says, I managed to get hold of a Behringer UCA222 at a very good price last week. I can now stream with perfect audio, just waiting for my video capture card to arrive. So yeah, the Behringer UCA222 is a really good value audio interface, uh, which allows you to get audio into a computer. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that you have found that useful. Nathan had a tooth taken out yesterday. No idea what conversation that was part of. The conversations I see are not in their threads like you get them on YouTube and Facebook and so on. So I don't know where these come from. I just like to throw them in every now and then when they intrigue me. 
Um, DJ Unknowns, favorite genres. We were talking favorite genres, weren't we? House, tech, deep house, old, hardcore, jungle, and drum and bass. A very learned and tasteful list of genres there. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lee says, it's very easy to switch. Uh, our friend of mine who used turntables tried mine and ended up buying a DDJ 400 simply because of the portability. Indeed. Uh, so back to our COVID stuff. Jason, I attended an outdoor house gig uh, in the FDR amphitheater last Saturday. Social distancing and masks. Indeed. Uh, bit, uh, advice on monitors coming in. Uh, Pre-Sonus Eric Eris 3.5 studio monitors are great and are not expensive, says Blake. So there you go. Um, so, uh, let's pull one or two more questions out here before I do have to shoot. Uh, the next one that is something new, uh, I'm just looking for something new here, uh, because these questions tend to get repeated. Um, beat blocks, so this is a good one. Discogs, which is a good place to buy vinyl, take, normally takes you to YouTube to listen to the track. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, we were talking mashups earlier. Rules says I did my first mashup last night using mixed in key. It made it very easy to do. Uh, so cool, let's talk what you can use if you want to do mashups uh, now. Uh, so if you want to make your own mashups, uh, if you're going to use, um, if you're going to follow the course that we're talking about here today, the one we made with Layback Luke, which has just been launched, Layback Luke's, oh, let's zoom in on Luke there. Layback Luke's bootlegs, mashups and re-edits, you're going to have to use Ableton Live because that's what Luke uses and that is what uh, you'll need to take that course. But look, there's more than one way to make a mashup. We've actually talked about a couple today. We've talked about uh, using Serato Flip. You've also talked about Recordbox, which has now got a mashup uh, function in it. Uh, but also we've got an app list here on the website. So if you head over to Digital DJ Tips and scroll down and find that rather tasteful looking bootleg cassette, uh, we list seven apps there for making quick re-edits mashups and bootlegs. So if you want to look at that list and uh, chew through that, they're all there. And indeed, uh, there's the one that Rule used, the mixing key mashup. Uh, but there's lots and lots of options there for you uh, and some which uh, you might not have thought of. So uh, if you want to have a go at this stuff uh, and you don't want to buy Ableton yet, head over there and have a look. Tony says, hey, Phil, loads of my music loving mates have purchased controllers over lockdown, investing their time and their passion. When we finally go back to normality, the world will have a completely new level of DJs who love their art. Uh, us longer in the tooth, guys. Uh, better keep their skills hot. Indeed, you've got to keep your skills hot nowadays. Uh, hard to find records let you listen to tracks online, says Kevin. Wow, they're still going. Hard to find records. They must have been going for 30 years. Uh, Brown Innovative Media says, where is the best place to get acapellas? The place that we've always recommended, uh, because they, you know, their heart has always been in the right place, is acapellas for you co.uk this is acapellas for you uh, but another place you could look uh, look at is vocal it vocal it is a little bit more uh, streamlined a little bit easier to use than acapellas for you both of these sites will make you uh, subscribe pay a little bit of money uh, to help them keep going uh, but that is uh, our advice there acapellas two sites for you to choose there uh, what microphone do you use for recording your video? Which mic do you use for recording your video, says Mutile. If you're talking about this video here, we use a blue Yeti microphone. That's what this one is, is here. It's a blue Yeti microphone. Um, Njox O'Neill says, what's your opinion on the new Pioneer mixer? And did you notice it looks like it's Jazzy Jeff's house that the leaked video came from? Uh, these leaked videos are normally not really unofficial you know they say oh go on leak a bit of it there's a little bit of insight for you there so if it was jazzy jeff's he would have been told that it was all right to do it uh but uh yeah maybe it was has jazzy jeff got a moving fan on his ceiling because there was a moving moving fan reflected in it as well as the color camera overhead um so uh why direct drive for turntables awesome love questions like this why direct drive for turntables says adam right so a dj turntable has got a platter and that platter is driven by a motor. Now, if that motor is very powerful, which is called high torque, it means that if you put your hand on the platter, it will try and go round extremely forcefully. And it's quite hard to stop it going round. Now, if you put a slip mat on top of that, which is a very thin piece of felt, and then you put a record on top of that, now, if you touch the platter, or touch the record rather, the platter will carry on going round at the same speed, but the record will stop dead. Because the slip mat is moving around to reduce the friction between the record and the platter. Then you can scratch 
And when you let go of the record, it will get up to speed again instantly. And that is why DJs use direct drive turntables because the hi-fi type turntables are what are called belt drive. And they have a platter, and the motor, let's say that my cup is the motor, instead of being attached to the platter, so it spins like this, is here. And there is a elastic band connecting the two of them. So you can imagine if you put your hand on the platter there, what's gonna happen is the motor will turn and turn and turn and the elastic band will stretch and stretch and stretch and slowly you might stop the motor. And then when you start it again, the elastic band will slowly get back to its normal size and the motor will start up really slowly. So it's really spongy and no good at all for scratching. That said, we all learned, us old school boys and girls, on belt drive turntables because they were all that most of us could afford or get back in the 90s. But nowadays, you can get really good direct drive turntables that won't cost you the earth. Uh, and actually, um, we've got a really good guide for uh, turntables that we uh, that we publish on Digital DJ Tips, and I'm just uh, dialing it up now to show you. So if you're interested in, in more about turntables and how turntables work and the ins and outs of them, head over to Digital DJ Tips. Just Google uh, 13 Best Turntables 2020, and you'll get to this guide here where we not only talk you through turntables, the history of turntables and so on, uh, but we talk you through what to look for. There you go. There's the reason why you should buy direct drive, not belt drive right there. Uh, we talk you through uh, the parts of a turntable. So we'll talk you through if you ever felt a bit embarrassed talking about turntables. Well, there is a, uh, a look at every single part of a turntable there, how to set them up. Uh, and then we give you 13 turntable picks from beginner all the way up to semi-pro, and then pro turntables. So there's a lot of interesting stuff there over on that uh, turntable article there, which you can go take a peek at. Uh, just go Google Digital DJ Tips 13 Best Turntables and you'll find that article. Thank you for the question. Uh, okay, we're gonna do one or two more here now because we've been nearly the hour and I really do have to get back to get back to teaching in our classes. Uh, the next uh, one is from William. He says, thank you for your, your advice last week. Um, Restream had a metallic tingy sound quality. I just ended up digging up the old desktop Windows computer and using Streamlabs. Oh, we're talking about streaming. It wouldn't be Restream that was causing that issue. It would be something else, but I'm glad you found something that worked there. Uh, so Midnight Wolf, if you wanna know about cheap controllers to get learning on, watch the replay, because we covered that question a little bit earlier on. Uh, Rubester says, Pioneer bring out the new CDJ 3000s, but what about a new mixer? The DJM 900 Nexus 2, is nearly five years old. Well, we already know the Pioneer DJ looks likely to be bringing out a new mixer because we covered it on the website. However, this isn't really a mixer to replace the DJ, DJM 900. It isn't at all. It's more a scratch mixer. So uh, we've got no news about a DJM 900 replacement, only to say that mixers don't really change very much. So maybe it's not a priority for Pioneer DJ to, to update the mixer just yet. Um, so juno.co.uk have got preview on the website and they also sell techno vinyl. So there you go, more advice there. Uh, Sambo610 had the had the Prime 4, but had to send it back for repair as the mixer section stopped working. Has anyone else had this problem? Go chat to Sambo on YouTube if you have that uh, issue. Uh, what's the best Pioneer CDJ, the 3000 or the 2000 Nexus 2? No com no competition. It's the 3000 by a long, long way. Martin Lloyd, if you go, if you email info at digitaldjtips.com and they will sort you out uh, instantly there, uh, the question that you asked. Uh, Ivan, what would you recommend? Oh, lots of beginner controller questions here. Uh, go and watch the replay uh, of this and we answered that question in quite some detail a bit earlier on. Um, Big problems in record box 6.1.1, says Mixmaster G with waveforms. It's been acknowledged by Pioneer DJ and the only fix is going back to 6.1 for analyzing. Wow, they've got to stop rolling out these buggy updates. Uh, it really is happening too often. Uh, does anyone here actually use Tractor, says Omar. Go tell Omar if you use Tractor on YouTube. Um, I don't know anyone who uses it. Everyone in my circles is on Serato DJ Pro or Recordbox. It's very geographical, I think, and also down to the kind of music you play. About 15% of the digital DJ tips audience, audience uses Tractor. Uh, right, so uh, one or two more questions. Omar says, I've got my eye on a course or two. Well, look, I'm not going to miss the opportunity to tell you that if you want to get the Layback Loop course that we just published, do it now because it's currently on discount and it won't be on sale for very long. Uh, if you want to get this brand new course here, uh, that was literally released two days ago, one day ago, uh, that we made with Luke to teach mashups and so on. Get it now, 
because it's 35% off and it won't be 35% off past this offer launch period. Um, so um, have you used and what's your thoughts on Play, D Play DJ TV? Uh, it's a new streaming service for DJs that lets you stream video. Uh, when they allow you to archive your video, and when I see a bit of traction on that new service, I will review it. So at the moment, uh, I don't see any advantages there over other services right now. But I'm keeping my eye on it. Uh, I really am. Um, okay, one or two more questions. Uh, this is from Axo, who says, I just came back from Bulgaria, and there things to be, seem to be a lot more relaxed when it comes to clubbing. So that's good to know. Uh, that... Well, I say good to know. Maybe some people disagree entirely with it, but uh, but it looks like in Bulgaria things are uh, at least a little bit more relaxed than in some places. Um, Michael says, "I'm loving the new layback Luke course, brother. The delivery is amazing." Hello, Michael. Always good to have you uh, giving the thumbs up for our stuff. Michael is one of our longest and most uh, valued customers, uh, so good to hear that from someone whose opinion we really really care about. Uh, but Mike says, chilling, getting the knowledge here, bro. You're crushing things lately. Uh, I see you, bro. So happy for you. I don't know if that was to me or someone else. But anyway, uh, thank you for the support there. Always good to hear this. Uh, right. This is going to be the last question. So I'm just going to uh, try and find a good one. Uh, lots of you doing the PC and Mac debate. Uh, this isn't a question, but I'm going to put it on. Disco Worm says, I'm 70 and I've been spinning since 1974. Now is an exciting time. That is the plane that we heard land earlier taking off again and i know that because there's only half a dozen planes a day in gibraltar fun facts about gibraltar here people i can watch a plane land on the runway from my house because we're high up and we can see the runway and i can leave my house walk out get on that plane and leave to go to london i literally can get on the plane that just landed because my house is so near the airport so i can wait for my flight to come in I don't even have to leave my home until my flight arrives. How many places in the world do you think you can do that? Can't be many. Uh, right, final question. Um, lots of you just agreeing with stuff I've been saying, which is cool. Good to good to uh, to hear that. Um, lots of people just loving Disco Worm. Uh, that's cool. Uh, even if you'd know nothing about Layback Luke's, uh, sorry, about uh, Ableton, would Layback Luke's new course still be wise? Absolutely. DJ Nine Iron, and the reason is that it teaches you right from the very beginning. So I, I will actually give you a sneak peek inside the course now. I've actually no idea what I did there. I'll give you a sneak peek inside the course now uh, and show you what it looks like, so you can see uh, how this is set up for beginners. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna uh, go into the courses page of Digital DJ Tips and show you. So if you've never bought one of our courses, by the way, this is a a good chance to have a peek inside and I'll show you how it works inside our training platform. Uh, so this is inside the Digital DJ Tips training platform. Uh, and let's just zoom out there so you can see that properly. There we go. Uh, and this is our, that's Digital DJ Lab. That's our membership program. That's something different. But here's the courses uh, that we have. And so when you buy courses from us, the ones you own will show up here. Uh, so this is Luke's course. So it starts off with uh, chatting about the course. Here at the top, me and Luke just introducing you. And then the Get Started module. So in the Get Started module, we really talk you through from the very beginning. Mindset, what you need, and then what is Ableton Live? We'll show you what it is. We'll show you how to install it. We'll show you all Luke's personal settings that he's worked out over the years uh, to make this stuff easy. Uh, and then we'll talk you through uh, song structure and so on, all the very, very basics, and then give you solid tips on how to follow this training. This whole module here is for absolute beginners to get up to speed. But then we don't drop you in at the deep end, oh no. Then we start off with re-edits and re-edits are the very simplest things you can do that you can actually also do in DJ software, for instance, not quite to the depth that we do it here, but you know, re-edits shouldn't trip you up. Re-edits are reasonably simple. Uh, so Luke talks you through how to make a re-edit. And only when you've worked through all of this material, and only when you've worked through all those videos, do we start to get into stuff which is going to be, you know, a learning curve, which is mashups. Uh, and mashups start to introduce key and stuff like that, and acapellas and so on. So you can see that it very gently takes you into uh, what you need here. And uh, towards the end of the course, you'll be making pretty amazing bootlegs. Uh, playing your own instruments and doing all this stuff. This looks like Ableton-like production, doesn't it? Uh, and uh, there's also some stuff in here which I love, 
which is where we actually threw Luke in at the deep end. Uh, so this is just how to get your how to get your um, stuff out of the uh, software and into your DJ software. This is all the skills you learn, by the way. Look at this list of skills here. It really is extremely advanced, this course. Uh, but I wanted to show you, you know, it gets advanced, but I've shown you hopefully how it starts at the beginning. But what I wanted to show you was this. This is really cool. So at the very end of the course, in fact, at the bonuses section here, uh, we said to Luke, this is where we've dumped in some stuff, which is we didn't want to confuse people in the course with. So this is kind of like more advanced stuff. Uh, but at the very end, we said to Luke, we want you to make a mashup. And we gave Luke some tracks and said, go on, make a mashup with these. And Luke did it and he did it live. This video is one hour, 56 minutes long. And you follow Luke from the very, very beginning to the very end of making his own full on mashup of two tracks, which is not just an acapella and a remix uh, and an instrumental, take it from me. He goes to a massive amount of detail there uh, to get that right. I've just spotted an error there that I need to get corrected. The tracks in bonuses. We normally put where to get the tracks that he uses and it's not showing. Uh, so I'll get my team to correct that. This literally went live less than 48 hours ago. So we're just spotting little things in there. Uh, and then I, I do a and a with him about it. And I asked him lots of questions about how he did that. But we really put him on the spot there. And that is an unedited video of him doing it. It's awesome. And the track he, track he makes at the end is pretty cool. So anyway, that is, um, in answer to your question, this is a, a course made for beginners. And we've been talking about, by the way, if you didn't uh, pick up at the beginning of that little section, Layback Luke's bootlegs, mashups and re-edits course that we just launched. And if you're interested in that course, there is your link, djtips.co slash mashups. Uh, and uh, sorry, slash mashup. Uh, and you'll learn all about that course there. You'll go to a page where there's a video about it and we'll show you what you need to know. Uh, but do get it now if you're interested in learning how to do this from Luke because it's 35% off at the moment. Right, enough. Thank you very, very much everyone who's asked questions. I know some of you have asked questions that didn't get answered, but my team will get to you wherever you are on, on YouTube or Facebook uh, and answer them underneath. Uh, so you will get an answer to your questions. Please help each other out by scrolling through the comments underneath uh, and answering each other's questions because that's what it's, what it's all about. Please do one of these two things for me now. If you've loved this today and you really want to help us do this in the future, hit the share button uh, because that is the most important thing you can do. If you uh, have already done that and you want to do something else, hit the like and the love button. That's just to make me feel good because I want to see that I've help you the best I can today. And finally, if there's stuff you want to see us do on these broadcasts that we don't do, if there's improvements you think we can make, please tell us in the comments. It's the only way we can get better at doing this thing. I'm done for this week. Apart from to tell you, because you do ask every week, if you want a free copy of this, you just have to go to join the website. It's free to join the website. Uh, and I'll give you a copy of this. I'll give you a copy to download of the PDF. You can also get this on Kindle and audiobooks and bookstores and so on. But if you just want to download a copy of the best way of learning how to DJ uh, in book form, just join Digital DJ Tips. Just head here uh, and we will uh, give you a copy of that book uh, as our thank you for joining us, being our latest member. It's free to join as well. Right, we're done. Uh, get good people. Get out there. Make the moments. I will see you again very soon. Take care of yourselves in the meantime. Uh, until Sunday at this time, exactly this time, look at your watch now, whatever your watch is saying, wherever you are in the world on Sunday, come back to this channel, unless you're watching on Facebook, it won't be on Facebook. Uh, come back to the channel you're watching on now uh, and I will do a one hour live stream from my, probably my terrace in Spain. We're going to head over to our holiday home this weekend. I'll take the live streaming gear with me and I'll do you a live stream from the, from the swimming pool uh, in Spain. And uh, who knows, if it feels warm enough, I might even jump in the pool at the end. Uh, it is a bit of a tradition. So if you want to see me DJing, you want to hang out, want to chat music, want to just chill. Um, we don't do education in that. We just play music. If you want to come and join me uh, at this time on Sunday, uh, I'll be doing that called Balcony Beats, uh, named after lockdown, which is when that uh, tradition started here at Digital DJ Tips. Right, I'm out of here. Thank you, folks. Have a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Rest of your day if you're in Europe. Uh, and all of your day if you're over there in America. 